Hi, I'm Nathan with Holston Gases. During this training module, we're going to discuss the gas metal arc welding process, but more specifically, we're going to talk about spray transfer. We're going to talk about what spray transfer is, what are the benefits, what are the disadvantages of spray transfer, how to set a machine for spray transfer, and how to recognize spray transfer by sound. So now begs the question, what is spray transfer? Spray transfer occurs when the electrode becomes molten and that molten metal is propelled axially across the welding arc in droplets that are smaller than the size of the electrode. So as you can see from this video clip, the small droplets are propelled across the arc and those droplets are smaller than the electrode diameter. The droplet rate can be as high as several hundred droplets per second. To achieve spray transfer, it is necessary to have a minimum of 80% argon as your, in your gas blend. Also, it is necessary to be above the globular to spray transition current. Now, the next question you should be asking yourselves is, well, what is a globular to spray transition current and how do I know what that is? Well, that's a good question and the glo globular to spray transition current is going to change for every given wire diameter and gas mixture. So as you can see, here's a chart that shows the different globular spray transition currents for different wire diameter and shielding gas combinations. So the last parameter that is necessary to achieve spray transfer is the voltage level. The voltage level is also going to change depending on the shielding gas and the wire diameter. So typically it is necessary to have a minimum of 25 volts to achieve a spray transfer. So as the carbon dioxide goes up, so does the voltage to uh, be in a spray transfer. So the three things that are necessary to be in a spray transfer is 80% argon, to exceed the globular to spray transition current, and to have a voltage of at least 25 volts for most applications. Most, most of the time it's going to be slightly higher than that, but 25 volts is a good starting point. And once you have these three conditions met, you should be able to get into a spray transfer. So some of the main advantages of spray transfer are high deposition rates, high deposition efficiencies as high as 98%, excellent bead appearance, and excellent uh, weld penetration and fusion. Some of the disadvantages of spray transfer are you're limited to the flat and horizontal positions and some vertical down. Okay, so now that we've talked about what spray transfer is and what are the benefits and the advantages and the disadvantages of it, we're going to now talk about how to set the machine and get everything set up so you can start welding with spray transfer. So the first thing to talk about is how to set the torch up and what's the right configuration. I see this more times than not that the contact tip to nozzle configuration is incorrect for spray transfer. Now the correct way to set up your contact tip and nozzle is to have your contact tip recessed in your nozzle approximately an eighth of an inch and you can order or set your MIG gun to come this way if you know that the customer is going to be using spray transfer. The reason we do this, there's two reasons. The first reason is because spray transfer is a higher heat input process and we want to protect the contact tip so it has longer life. Okay. The next is when we're welding in spray transfer we use quite a bit longer of a contact tip to work distance. The contact tip to work distance is the distance from the contact tip to the work, okay? So if I was going to measure it, I would measure the electrode stick out right now. That distance from where the wire touches to where it exits the contact tip is your contact tip to work distance. And most of the time, the contact tip to work distance with spray transfer is greater than half of an inch, okay? And usually less than one inch. Now the reason why we want it the second reason we want it recessed is because we want to be able to still have adequate gas coverage, okay, and still have that longer stick out. If we had our contact tip extended out of our nozzle and we were having to pull back the three quarters of an inch for a contact tip to work distance, then we might be sacrificing some gas coverage to have that longer stick out. So this offers two things. First, it protects the contact tip, and second, it allows us to have a longer contact tip to work distance without having a longer nozzle to work distance. So we're not sacrificing our gas coverage. So as far as setting the correct welding parameters, I'm gonna start at 27 and a half volts and 600 inches per minute. 
I know these are good parameters based on experience, but if you're not sure, the best thing to do is to check with the wire manufacturer's data sheet. This always has a good table for uh, some starting parameters to get started. Now that I have the machine set, I'm going to use a push technique, which is what's recommended for spray transfer, and take note of the art characteristics, including the spatter that you see visible. Now during that weld you could notice the very low spatter levels that were evident from good arc stability and you didn't see the big BBs jumping out of the arc for lack of a better term and also you can look at the finished bead appearance how it's very smooth, has a very flat face and there's very little spatter on the adjoining plates. Now what little spatter does exist, it's easily brushed off with, with very little effort. So this is a very good spray transfer weld on 8th inch material. Next we're going to weld with a reduced voltage to demonstrate what the welding arc will look like when there is not enough voltage. Now I've turned the voltage down 2.5 volts and I want you to take note of the sound of the arc and also this amount of spatter that's generated from the arc. Now from that demonstration, you can see that there was much more spatter being generated from the arc. You could see the larger, brighter BBs uh, being expelled from the weld puddle. And those are evident on the finished weld plate. Also, you could hear a much more defined crackling sound with the arc rather than the typical swoosh sound or wisping sound of a spray transfer arc. So those are the big differences, and uh, this was only because of a couple volts drop uh, from our welding voltage. And this can be caused by a couple things. Sometimes just the parameters are set wrong to a lower voltage, or there's voltage drops in the welding cables, which is most likely the cause of a, of a spattery spray transfer weld. And the guy using the machine doesn't always know that he's got a voltage drop because he sets his machine to 27 and a half volts which should be uh, good for spray transfer however he's got some terrible ground leads or welding cables and he's got two or three volts of voltage drop and so he'll never really get into a good spray transfer and his welds will look like what you see right here okay now i have set the machine for two volts higher than where I previously had it set. I have the machine cranked all the way up. So now I want to demonstrate what it'll look like when the voltage is too high. The arc's going to be really quiet. There's going to be very, very little spatter. But you'll notice that it's very hard to control the arc and, and sometimes undercut can result. So here we go. So now you can see the finished weld bead with that higher voltage and the arc was very quiet. There is absolutely no spatter present. However, you can see that the puddle was difficult to control. You can see some voids here and here where it was difficult to control the puddle. And so you gotta be really careful when welding at those higher voltages. Not to mention it puts a great deal more heat input uh, per inch into your weld. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Um, so the higher the voltage you go, the less spatter you get, but you also start having a harder time to control the weld profile. So now that we've seen what a good set of parameters looks like and what a set of parameters looks like with too low a voltage and then too high of a voltage, I'm gonna take the 27 and a half volts and the 600 inches per minute parameters and I'm gonna drop the wire feed speed now to 450 inches per minute. So here we go.
so from that welding arc, what you could see was you could see that there was very little spatter. Uh, the arc was very quiet. However, controlling the bead shape was very difficult. And you can see up here at the toes of the weld how difficult it was to maintain some consistency and we have some undercut present. And so we just had way too much voltage for the wire feed speed that we were running. So what, you, what I want you to see is that this is a balancing act between wire feed speed and voltage. And so this had the same effect as if we would have left the wire feed speed the same and yet turned the voltage up to 29 and a half volts. Okay, now I have the wire feed speed at 700 inches per minute and the voltage at 27.5. And so now we're going to see what happens when the wire feed speed is turned up the voltage is left the same from our optimum setting. So now you can see the results of welding at 700 inches per minute at 27 and a half volts. Our optimum settings again were 27 and a half volts and 600 inches per minute. In this test, I raised up the wire feed speed to show the impact. And so what was happening while I was welding was the electrode was kind of cramming into the puddle. And this was causing the arc to be somewhat buried in the puddle, which was causing the spatter to be generated and you can see the evidence spatter here. However, there's excellent bead shape. Because of that buried arc, it's easier to control the puddle and you'll find a lot of welders doing this. However, in this case, the wire feed speed was just a little bit too high because they're probably doing that, you know, to try to weld faster. However, um, if you would just turn the voltage up, maybe half of a volt or one volt, the spatter would have fixed itself or brought the wire feed speed down to around 600 and you would have been okay as well. But I hope that gives a good understanding of the balancing act between wire feed speed and voltage. So during this training module, we talked about spray transfer, what spray transfer is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of spray transfer, and how to set a machine uh, to weld with spray transfer. We also witnessed several different sets of welding parameters and the influence they had on the welding arc and the stability, mostly the spatter levels. So I hope you have found this training module really helpful. And if you have any questions, never hesitate to give me a call. Thank you.